This Torah class is brought to you by TorahAnytime.com So as we look at the beautiful countryside and the river, we're lulled into a sense of, uh, we're enraptured with the scenery, and we forget this is the Eretz Damim. This is the land that is soaked in Jewish blood for a thousand years, starting when the year Tatnu, the year 1096, the Crusades. Generation after generation, this land is soaked. In the ground, in the water. And uh, let's speak about Rabbeinu Gershon again, because we spoke about his great contributions to the Jewish people. But there was another takana that he made, and that is he forbid Yidin to shame those who renounced their Judaism under duress and then returned. Throughout history, there was this... There's always been a struggle between the Rabbanim and the Hamoinam, whether to accept back Jews who gave up on their religion. The Jews who, ha- who were courageous and would not give up their religion did not always embrace their fellow brethren who renounced their Judaism and came back when it was convenient for them. But the Rabbanim always tried to accept them willingly, knowing that if we didn't accept them, they would be lost forever. And one of the Haramim of Rabbeinu Gershon, because it was common Christian tactic to forcibly convert Yidin by threatening them with death or expulsion. There were entire communities in Germany and France that gave up their lives, but not everyone was able to withstand. Now, Rabbeinu Gershon personally suffered numerous tragedies. His wife died, tragically, and then he moved to Mainz, to, first to Metz, and then to Mainz. Some say his only son, or perhaps one of two sons, in the year 1012, there was a priest here in Mainz who converted to Judaism and was burned at the stake. And the church of Mainz demanded the forcible conversion of the entire community. Most of the Yidin fled, but many were trapped in the city and were compelled to convert including Rabbeinu Gershon's son. Rabbeinu Gershon's son, they forced him to Shmad. He had to renounce Judaism, and Nebuch, he died before he was able to do tshuva. And when, upon the death of his only son, Rabbeinu Gershon is recorded in the Mordechai, in Mesech Damoid Katan Simen Tav Tav Pevav. It's recorded in the Arzaru and Hilchas Avelos. Rabbeinu Gershon sat shiva for 14 days seven days for the body of his son and seven days for the soul of his son. Marami Rutenberg writes, he wasn't required to do that, but he was in such pain that his son did not have the opportunity to do tshuva. This gives us a little bit of the glimpse into the times that Rabbeinu Gershon lived. Someone who was able to produce on the level that he did, just to give you an example, there's a Rabbeinu Gershon in the end of Masech the Tainis. The Gemara says that from Tuba of and on, it was a day of Simcha. It was the day of Taber Magal. It was the day that they would break the sickle because the sun would begin to wane and the wood was no longer dry enough to, uh, be, to be used on the Mizbeach. One of the reasons why Tubav is a festive day, the Gemara says, is because they stopped cutting the wood for the Mizbeach because since the sun stops, starts waning on Tubav, so the wood is not sufficiently dry, it cannot be used on the Mizbech because it might be wormy. So the question is, why is there a simcha that they stop cutting the wood? Why is that a simcha? So the Rajbam learns the simcha is that from here is the source of making a siyam upon the completion of a mitzvah. They stopped chopping the wood, this was so to speak the siyam of the chopping of the wood, and therefore it was a day of simcha. But Rabbeinu Gershon says an amazing chidosh. You know why Tuba of is a yom simcha? Because until Tuba of, they spent two minutes a day chopping wood for the Mizbeach. When Tuba of comes, there are an extra few moments a day to learn Torah. That's a great Simcha. Even an extra moment or two of Limana Torah, even a moment, an extra opportunity for a moment or two, warrants a day of great Simcha. Rabinu um, Gershon died two years after Rav Haigain. And that closed the area of the Gainim. And I'll tell you something interesting. You know what Rabbeinu Gershon wrote? Sechar bris Abraham ba'akedas Yitzchak v'hoi shiyeinu l'man shemechak 
that we say in the Slicha, so we say in the Ila, this period, Zechar Bris Avraham Akedas Yitzchak was written by Rabbeinu Gershon. When Rabbeinu Gershon was about to leave this world, he said, Tzitzis Chutz, and he passed away. And the Taz brings down in Yoradeya, there are two interpretations of Tzitzis Chutz. Number one, to remove the tzitzis from his talus. And number two, to take, to take the tzitzis and remove them from the Arain. So this was the city of Mainz where Rabbeinu Gershon lived and thrived. Zechusai Yagein Aleinu. You've just experienced another Torah class brought to you by TorahAnytime.com.